In this video, I want to talk about gradient, which is one of my favorite objects in Calc 3, uh, and uh, a story about how a gradient saved my life. Um, here we go, let's get to it. Okay, so gradient has one of the coolest symbols in mathematics. Uh, so when you want to write what a gradient is, uh, you use this upside down triangle right here. Uh, this symbol is sometimes called nabla. Um, unlike a lot of mathematics notation, uh, a lot of times it's it's a Greek letter, right? So nabla looks like it might be a Greek letter, but it's not. Uh, it's it's a totally a made up symbol. Uh, it's upside down delta, right? So capital delta. Delta is a Greek letter D. Um, that's a Greek letter, but the nabla is not. Still a cool symbol. So if you write upside down triangle uh, right next to a function f, that's the notation for gradient of f. And what is a gradient? Gradient is a vector um, where each of the component is partial derivative in that direction. So uh, if a function has two variables, x and y, uh, it's a two dimensional vector where the first uh, component is the partial derivative in uh, x direction. And the second component is the partial derivative in y direction. So uh, here it is in angle bracket notation. Here it is with the i and j notation. Um, means exactly the same thing. So gradient kind of takes all the partial derivative uh, information and puts it into a single vector. But this is more useful than you might you might first uh, suspect. Uh, it's not just the partial derivatives. It, it tells you some geometrical information too. Um, so let's first start by um, talking about derivative that's not in the direction or x or y. So let's say you want to know um, how the function is changing in some direction uh, that you specify. And that direction doesn't have to be uh, exactly in x or y direction. So let's say um, <clears throat> I want to know how the function is changing in the direction of 1 half comma root 3 over 2. Um, uh, just a side note, this happens to be a unit vector. Um, so if you compute the length of this vector, 1 half squared plus root 3 over 2 squared. That's 1 quarter plus 3 quarters, which is exactly 1. So th this is a unit vector. And um, we'll talk about what to do when this is not a unit vector. Um, but let's first assume that you have a directional vector and it's, it's unit length. How do we find out how the function changes in that direction? Well. Uh, because we looked at um, uh, the tangent line approximation, uh, I, I think you might get an um, uh, idea of how this might be done. So how we do it is we look at the partial derivative in that direction and how much we travel in x direction plus partial derivative in y direction times how much uh, you travel in y direction. So um, if we have a function f and we want to know what the, what the derivative in the direction of this vector at uh, 1, 1, uh, here's what we do. We first compute the partial derivatives. So derivative with respect to x is just 1 derivative with respect to y is going to be e to the y. And um, this is the partial derivative in general, um, but let's evaluate it at 1, 1. So partial derivative with respect to x is uh, always 1. It's a constant. But partial derivative with respect to y, I can plug in 1 into y, and I get e. OK. Um, so uh, the derivative, I'm going to write 
in this directional vector u. I'm going to call this guy a u vector of f is going to be uh, 1, that's the derivative in x direction, times how much you traveled in one x direction plus uh, derivative with respect to y times how much you traveled in the y direction. And this is going to be uh, the directional derivative um, of function f at 1, 1 in the direction of uh, the vector u. I, I hope that made sense. Um, we have to restrict ourselves to unit length vector because uh, if you just make this a very long vector, um, then you, you can make the, the derivative be as large as you want to by artificially making each of the component large. Um, but what you want is like how much increase do you get per one unit in that direction? That's what we uh, want to compute with the directional derivative. Okay, so uh, that's what we computed in this particular situation. Um, in general, um, what we could do is just uh, uh, compute this dot product, right? I mean, that's exactly what we did, right? We looked at the, the gradient vector, which has the, the partial derivatives. And we looked at the components of u, the, the unit vector in a direction you care about. And we took the dot product. We multiplied the components and added together, okay? So uh, that's how you can take derivative in any direction you feel like um, in general. And uh, you can check that um, if you take the directional derivative in i direction, you're going to get partial derivative with respect to x. And if you uh, take a dot product with uh, j vector, then you're going to get partial derivative with respect to y direction. So um, this doesn't change the result of what we had earlier, except now we have more flexibility. We can point in any direction we like. OK. Um, so that's the, the unit for unit vectors. Um, sometimes maybe you want to specify a direction, but it's not, it doesn't happen to be a unit vector. Um, there, what you have to do is just, just make it into a unit vector. So if you have any other vector, compute the magnitude and divide by it. Um, so uh, if you have a direction like this, You compute the length. So 4 plus uh, 9 is square root of 13. Um, so you're going to use u vector, which is 2 over root 13 and 3 over root 13. So you just have to rescale it by dividing by the length. Uh, and then you use that formula. So make sure to take that uh, step to make sure the vector you have is a unit vector, or if it's not, just divide by the length and make it into a unit vector. Okay, so uh, gradient is pretty cool, right? It allows you to take derivative in any direction you like by doing the dot product, which is not, not too hard to compute. Um, it actually gives you a little bit more information too. Um, so here's some kind of question to kind of help you think about it. Uh, in what, with what direction does the largest directional derivative occur? So I want you to remember that there were two different formula we had for dot product. Uh, one was multiplying the components and adding it up uh, like we did in this example. Um, but uh, you, also, you could also compute it if you knew the angle between the, the vectors, right? So, The dot product could be computed by uh, taking the magnitude of each of the vectors and multiplying by cosine of the angle between them. Um, and I could simplify it slightly further. The dot product, the, the direction vector u has uh, length one. It has to be a unit vector. So magnitude of unit vector is just one. 
okay? So directional vector is always the magnitude of the uh, gradient itself times cosine of the angle between the, the gradient vector and the directional vector. But we know that cosine is always stuck between negative one and one, right? Um, and cosine is equal to one uh, when the angle is zero. Um, so this means that if you want to maximize, if you want the largest possible directional derivative, uh, you want the angle to be zero. So gradient is pointing in the direction with the maximum increase of the function. Um, so that's a fact that you should know. Gradient nabla f points towards maximum increase. Uh, or maximum increase or the, the largest derivative direction. That's what I mean by that. Um, and also the magnitude of uh, the gradient itself tells you what is the maximum derivative. Um, so if you just care about how steep uh, could the derivative get, what's the largest um, slope you can get from that function on that surface, then uh, the largest slope is the magnitude of the gradient itself. Okay, so uh, just by writing it as a vector, uh, it has this geometrical information, like it points in the direction of the maximum derivative and uh, the length is actual maximal derivative of that um, function at that location. I hope that made sense. Okay, so gradient is pretty cool. Uh, okay, so story time. Um, so when I was a grad student, um, uh, I was going on a hike with my friend Brian. So uh, Brian and I have been friends for a very long time. Um, since high school, um, uh, we're very different people. He's very uh, muscular, fit, uh, an active person. And I'm like introverted uh, mathematician, right? Um, but uh, uh, we wanted to go on a hike together um, because he was training for uh, like a triathlon. Actually, he was, I think it was a triathlon. So that's, that's the race where you run, bike, and swim uh, all at one go, um, which takes hours, um, which is a crazy, uh, crazy event to uh, participate. He's done it a couple of times and uh, he was training for his third one. Um, and I just wanted to go on a casual hike where um, I, don't, I don't die. <laughs> So we went to Mount Pelchuk, um, and he, this was the plan. Um, so he drove us there. Um, I had the backpack with like, food, water, and um, all the gear. And uh, he was just, uh, he wanted to train. So he, he kind of stripped down to like, he's, um, he was shirtless at the top. Um, and he was running, he was gonna run this trail up and down uh, three times um, while I walked at a regular human speed uh, up and down this trail. Uh, I think it was about five miles or so. And um, so while I do that, he was going to go up and down three times. He was going to pace it so that that would be the case. <clears throat> and so so that's, that's what we did. Um, so we were going up the, the trail and um, every time uh, he passes me going down or coming back up, uh, he would take a drink of some water and get some protein bars. Uh, and then like he takes off again. Um, so uh, I, I was walking along mostly by myself because uh, Brian was out there um, and I was thinking about math probably. 
we went up, uh, we got to the, to the summit, uh, which is fine. And we were coming back down. So this was, uh, this must have been Brian's last trip. Um, but uh, while I was thinking, walking, um, thinking about math, I realized that uh, I'm not on the trail anymore. I was, I was thinking I wasn't really paying attention to my surroundings. Um, and I was surrounded by trees uh, and there's, there's no trail. Um, so I, as soon as I catch myself, I'm going, oh no, I, I should get back on trail. So I turn around 180 degrees and went straight um, for about 20 minutes. Um, I'm sure I, I wasn't lost for 20 minutes on the trail. Um, and uh, I go back for 20 minutes and I, I, I don't see anything. I don't see the trail. Uh, I must have uh, mistaken which direction I, I was heading back in. Um, and I'm like, oh no, I'm lost. Uh, I better get back to where I was at. Um, so I turn around again and go uh, 30 minutes uh, going back and I don't recognize anything. Like I, I'm not getting where I was at. So uh, just from um, like what I found out afterwards, I, I think it happened ne near here. It's, it was one of the, the bigger switchbacks um, and there wasn't a well-defined trail there. There were some rocky path and you could, the trail was slightly harder to see. So. Uh, what must have happened is that I'm like walking back and I forgot to turn and then I turn around, go 20 minutes and I turn around and go 30 minutes and uh, I, I can't find the trail anywhere. So I'm at this point, I'm more than an hour off the trail um, and I don't see anything. It's just thick, dense forest. Um, and I don't know which way I should be going. Um, so I sat there and um, thought about math and I was thinking, I know how to get myself out of this. I'll just follow the gradient. So what I mean by that is that I'm gonna travel in the direction of maximum increase. Um, so uh, the, you, could, you can see from the contour map. So there's lots of uh, curves that you see of a particular height, right? So uh, this line right here uh, is 3,800 feet. This curve right here is 4,200 feet. So on the curve, uh, that's a level curve, right? Um, it's particular height. That's the direction of zero derivative because the height is not changing along that curve. A gradient is uh, perpendicular to that. So it's always pointing towards the highest uh, increase slope at a particular point. So uh, for example, if I'm standing right there, uh, the zero derivative direction is that way. Uh, 90 degrees from level curve, uh, that's in the direction of the gradient. So maybe I'll write, draw nabla f there uh, to indicate. So uh, what was I thinking uh, when I was saying, oh, gradient uh, is that, well, I mean, there's, there's really only one summit of Mount Pilchuk. Uh, there, there might be smaller tips, but um, if you get to smaller tips, you can always see uh, a higher tip that you can go towards. Um, so my thinking was that, well, I've already been to the summit. Um, if I keep climbing, eventually I'm gonna get back at the summit no matter where I am in this mountain. Um, that was my thinking. Um, so I, I would, at each point I would climb towards uh, the maximum um, increasing direction. It was through thick forest, so I, I was slow, um, but eventually uh, I would get near the top uh, or uh, I would see the trail near the top and then I'm back on track, right? Um, so uh, I did this for, for a couple of hours. I, I kept on climbing um, 
and eventually uh, I did I did find a trail um, and I started heading back down um, and uh, somewhere near the bottom I met Brian again. So uh, he was freaked out when I was lost uh, because I had his car keys, I had his shirt, I had his food. Um, he had nothing except for pants <laughs> and maybe sunglasses. Um, and uh, he, after he, he came back down the third time and couldn't find me, he went up and down two more times uh, trying to look for me. Um, and he even got the forest um, ranger. Um, but yeah, I, I did see Brian uh, at the, at the um, parking lot uh, at, at the end. He completely missed his dinner plans. He was very angry with me. And uh, I was excited to share uh, how I used mathematics to save my life. Um, and he just kind of made fun of me the entire time. <laughs> that like, why would you climb? Like, you should, you should go down the mountain, not up the mountain. That seems like the opposite direction he, you should be heading. But um, I think I was in the right. Um, if I climb down the mountain, um, this map doesn't show it, but uh, there's acres and acres of thick, dense forest. Um, and if I wasn't lucky enough to cross a road, uh, I could have been lost for uh, days. Uh, in fact, uh, I think a couple of years after this incident, uh, I, I did find a, like a newspaper article of somebody being lost on this exact same trail for days. Um, so uh, if they had followed gradient advice, I feel like the person would have got himself out of the trouble in a few hours. Anyways, um, so that's how gradient saved my life. <clears throat> um, so let's actually, uh, now that we have this contour map, um, we could actually do some mathematics on this map. Uh, let's compute some um, directional derivative. So let's say um, I was at this point um, at the 4,200 feet and I was traveling, let's say it's not exactly um, in the gradient direction because uh, that makes the computation a little bit too easy. Uh, let's say I was heading that way. Okay, um, so uh, how, can I, how can I compute this? So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to compute the, the gradient um, magnitude. Okay, so this is how steep it is in the, the steepest direction. So I'm going to estimate this. So I'm out here and if I travel in perpendicular direction, uh, the next dark line here, uh, I, I believe this is at 4,400 feet. So I think every dark line is 200 feet. This was 4,000 feet. And this is 3,800 feet. Okay. So if I travel in this direction, about that distance, uh, I climbed 200 feet. Um, in uh, elevation gain. Um, and uh, the, the scale is off the map, but I happen to know that um, this, this uh, border is about one mile long. Um, so almost exactly one mile long. Um, so uh, let's see, uh, one mile is uh, 5,280 feet. Uh, and this distance right here, um, I'm just going to estimate it's, it's about one tick mark here. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, this is one eighth of a mile. Um, okay, so what is this saying? Um, so I had an elevation gain of 200 feet 
when I traveled uh, horizontally um, by about one eighth of a mile. So five to 80 feet divided by eight uh, is how much horizontal distance traveled. So elevation gain divided by horizontal distance, that's rise over run. That's the, uh, the slope in the direction of the gradient. Let's compute this. Okay. And roughly speaking, this is uh, 0 0.303 uh, feet of elevation gain per one foot traveled. Okay, so yeah, like a 30% increase. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that's how steep, uh, if, you, if you travel during the, uh, towards the gradient, uh, but if I traveled a little bit off to the side here, uh, I'm computing the dot product, so I can use this uh, formula. I already computed uh, the steepness Okay, and the next thing I can compute is uh, what angle um, did you make with the, the gradient? And I'm just gonna estimate that that's about 30 degrees. Um, so I'm just gonna say cosine of 30 degrees. Uh, okay. Um, so let's make sure I'm on degree mode. So. 0.303 times cosine of 30 degrees is roughly 0 0.2624. So that is the derivative um, or the, the steepness of the hill. Uh, if you're at this point traveling in direction um, of you. Sorry, this map get, got really messy. <laughs> But yeah, you can look at uh, these contour maps and estimate uh, steepness um, using this method. Okay, I think this would be a good place to stop. I hope you enjoyed your story. And uh, actually, I have one more thing I wanna share. Yeah, that's, that's the uh, summit in Mount Pelchuk. There's like a little hut there. It's beautiful, right? Anyways, I'll see you later.